All right, welcome back. All roads lead to Yah. As I was saying, every aspect of our life should lead back to Yah, and this includes the road to hell. All right, we're just going to jump right on in because we got a lot of material to cover. We left off with what I pray was a convincing display of evidence by way of testimony from the higher echelon of allopathic medicine, along with the AMA itself, that allopathic medicine um, of today, the allopathic system of medicine of the day is the number one cause of death in this country. Mm -hmm. That said, our creator contraindicates the sorcery, strange fires, and sacrifices that they employ throughout their practices in hopes of managing disease. Please consider, Deuteronomy 18.10 says, There should not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire. And, you know, just for reflection, laser and radiation is a type of fire, is it not? Yes. It goes on to say, or that use of divination. Divination is, is something discovered by guesswork or intuition. Is that not what they do? Uh, you know, allopathic medicine, you know, is centered around guesswork and or intuition, you know, actuality. Or an observer of times, or an enchanter. An enchanter is one that casts spells, mm -hmm. such as uh, the doctors that use fear tactics. They're casting spells of fear. You know, you go in there with a cold, and next thing you know, they want to do open heart surgery. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, well, I, I was feeling fine. Yeah, but you, you need this, and you need it right now. Yeah. If not, you're going to die. Well, I was feeling fine before I walked in here. You know, these are fear tactics. You know, we spoke about these spells of fear. So I'm going to just say, say loud with that. It goes on to say, or a witch. And the witch speaks to a sorcerer or a pharmacist. You know, scripturally speaking, that's what it speaks to. Uh, also, let's take a look in Galatians 5, verses 19 through 21. It says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, or sorceries. Here it is again. And this word is pharmakia, number 5331 in your strongs. And um, this is where we get the words pharmaceuticals, pharmacies, and pharmacists from. So, say a lot. Now this is depicted here as one of the lusts of the flesh. And it goes on to include some other guys with it. That, uh, that's not too kind. Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. All right? Now, what are the consequences for one who break covenant with Yah the Most High? You know, this is, this is what we, we're going to speak to today. Now, we're going to take a look in Deuteronomy 28 where it speaks of these such consequences for those who break covenant with the Most High. Deuteronomy 28, 15 tells us, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of Yahuwah Elohim, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. See, this is the consequence for breaking covenant with Yah. Curses. But what kind of curses? Well, if we jump down a little bit, uh, say we, we'll go to uh, Deuteronomy 28, 22. We have an example. It says, Yahuwah shall smite thee with a consumption. Now, this word consumption actually speaks to something, you know, wasting away. You know, as if something was just peeled layer by layer until it's just gone. You know, and it speaks to consumptive type diseases such as cancer, muscular dystrophy, AIDS, etc. There's a lot of them out there. And it goes on to say, and with fever. And, you know, for example, scarlet fever, ye yellow fever, malaria, etc. The list goes on. And with an inflammation 
you know, which speaks to inflammatory uh, um, diseases of the body, such as gout, colitis, Crohn's disease, IBS, which is irritable um, bowel syndrome, etc. And with an extreme burning, such as gonorrhea, cystitis, ulcers, you know, etc. And with the sword and with blasting and with mildew, eczema, psoriasis, scabies, athlete's feet, etc. And they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Now it jumps down, we jump down to 27 and 28. It says, Yahweh will smite thee with the botch. You know, something that, that relates to that is rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, you know, of, uh, with the botch of Egypt, and with the emeralds, boils, and with the scab and with the itch, whereof thou canst not be healed. Yahuwah shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. What does he mean? We know what madness is and blindness, but what is this, what is meant by astonishment of heart? Well, this word astonishment is to my, to my home, number 85-41, meaning consternation. That is a paralyzing dismay. What is dismay? Dismay is to destroy the courage or resolution of by exciting dread or apprehension. See, and this is precisely what they do with those fear tactics. They destroy the courage that you have in Yah. They destroy the resolution that you're looking for by exciting dread and apprehension. You know? So, just think about that for a minute. Well, what does one to do when they become ill then? Where else are they to go for help? What are Yah, where are Yah's natural physicians? Why do we hear very little past or present to their credit concerning healing, the healing of diseases? And the answer to these questions date back to the late 1800s, the early 1900s. This is when the AMA, i.e. the American Medical Association, began their quest to monopolize America's medical industry. Working through the Carnegie Foundation and the Rockefeller Institute, they hired a guy named Abraham Flexner to intentionally go out and discredit any school of healing that did not conform to their form of medicine. And while Flexner was doing this, Rockefeller was going about buying up pharmaceutical companies. Now it was the perfect plan with Flexner's, Flexner's unscrupulous practices in conjunction with Rockefeller owning many other pharmaceutical companies combined with strong political ties in Congress, they succeeded in forcing most natural healing schools closed under the guise of improving health care. So an improvement. Now this turn of events would ultimately lead to their monopolization of America's health care industry. A monopoly that remains to this very day. They, rec they recommended the licensing of doctors and hospitals as well as government subsidies to drug medicine, um, to drug medicine schools and drug medicine research. Just think about that for a minute. They, they pushed out all, all the natural um, healers, and then they, then, then they got instituted their licensing for, for their hospitals and their doctors, and then got the government to pay for it. You know, do you see that? Congress was then persuaded to heed these recommendations, and they were instituted between 1910 and 1920. After this occurred, whatever doctors that continued to pursue alternative methods had their licenses taken away or were imprisoned. And this is still happening now today. Many of these doctors were able to heal all types of diseases, including cancer, malaria, tuberculosis, and everything else known to man that the allopaths couldn't. You know, I can tell you a bunch of stories about that, but uh, I won't. All that aside, Yah still has his healers out here. Yes. They may be few and far between, but they do still exist. That said, it is my opinion that oftentimes most would be better off adhering to a proper health philosophy along with natural modalities, which has been proven effective for centuries, such as some of the things we'll get into later within um, this series, and taking matters into their own hands rather than subjecting themselves to a system of medicine that goes against the teachings of Elohim. If we're believers, how, how, how much do we believe? Do we, do, if we trust them, how, how far do we trust them? 
You know, do we trust him with our health? You know, we say that he's our life, but yet we won't trust him with our life. Hello, somebody. Okay. Keep moving before I get jumped on. All right. So by all means, let us seek out Yah's healing methods rather than settling for man's cures. Remember how we gave the definitions of, 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 a, of healing and health versus a cure? You know, yeah. cure was, was the absence of symptoms right. of a, of a, um, of a um, disease or injury, mm -hmm. but a healing was the eradication of the disease or illness or injury in and of itself. Mm -hmm. You know, see, you can still be diseased and not have any symptoms. So you can, mm -hmm. you can be cured by, by the med medical profession's definition. You can be cured but not healed. Mm -hmm. You know, well, why go for the cure? Why not go for the healing? You know, and then, you know, aim for the stars and maybe you'll land on the moon. You know, we serve an L of miracles. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Remember, we can do all things through Messiah who strengthens us. So be encouraged. But with the information contained within this series, you will have the knowledge needed to fight the good fight of faith concerning your health. Yeah. You know, we need to remember that knowing is half the battle. Hosea 4, 6 teaches us, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So knowing is half the battle. He, he goes on to say, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy Elohim. I will also forget thy children. So you see, you know, we're destroyed for lack of knowledge. So that's half the battle. You know, but when the knowledge comes, we can't reject the knowledge. Because if we reject the knowledge, Yah's going to reject us. We pray for these things, but when it comes, we don't want to accept it. Now, the other half of the battle is the application of knowledge once you've received it. And know for certainty, Proverbs 26, 2, as the bird by wondering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. All right, now, was, now we're going to get into why we become sick. Do my man look sick or what? <laughs> yeah, poor fellow. Well, we're going to see how he got that way so we can prevent ourselves from getting that way, right? Amen. Amen. Exodus 15, 25 through 27 says... And he cried unto Yahuwah, and Yahuwah showed him a tree, which when he had cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for him a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of Yahuwah thy Elohim, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am Yahuwah that healeth thee. And they came to Elim, where, where were twelve wells of water, and three score and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. You know, now, we're going to dig into this just a little bit. Because for those who have eyes to see, I'm just going to touch on it. I'm not going get to in, get into it. It's just... You know, if you, if you can't grab it first, go around, just put it on the shelf. You know, it says, And Yahuwah showed him a tree. That tree represents the Messiah. And made for him a statute and an ordinance. That's his, the Messiah's um, commandments, his teachings and instructions. Yahshua's commandment. And he proved them. And that's why he's given us his commandments, to prove us. Yeah. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of Yahuwah, you know, to do Yahshua's teachings and instructions, to do the commandments of Elohim, to do that which is right in Yah's sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, he will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought thee upon the Egyptians. The Egyptians represents the world, you know. So here it is. This is actually a prophetic passage, not a not only prophetic, but mess messianic passage, speaking to the Messiah. You know, the Messiah was that tree, you know, that was thrown in that water, and the waters became sweet. 
you know, the waters represents the nations. You know, and this is just a picture of the Messiah, you know, um, being, being given unto the nations that was sifted throughout the world, the lost tribes of Israel. <laughs> Hence, when he came, he told his apostles to go where? He told them to go only to the lost sheep of Israel. And then afterwards, he told Paul to go where? He told him to go into the Gentiles. You know, see, this is a picture of this tree being thrown in this water is a picture of the Messiah bringing back that which was sifted amongst the nations and bringing in the Gentiles with them. You know, and it says, this recipe, by the way, this, this is a recipe for good health. This is a recipe for health. And if we would, if we would cook up this recipe and eat it, it will be it would be just as healing for us as it was for them. Because Yah changeth not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If we was to, were to do that which is right in his sight, and we'll give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, and put, he will put none of the diseases upon us, which he hath brought upon the Egyptians. He still is Yahuwah that healeth us. He didn't stop being our healer, y'all. And it says, and they came to Elim, this word Elim means palm trees. It's a picture of righteousness, that which is upright. It says, where twelve wells of water. And hello, twelve disciples. You know, and it says, in three score and ten palm trees. Hello, the lost tribes of Israel and the Gentiles. And they encamped there by the waters. What waters? The living water that spewed from the belly of our Messiah. All right. And we're going to move on from there. It says, there are three scriptural reasons for sickness and disease. Therefore, from a scriptural perspective, one can conclude that if they are sick, it's for one of these reasons. There's first a sickness unto death, i.e. they're about to die. Second, there's, they've, made, they've been made sick to bring glory to the name of Elohim via their testimony. Or third, because one is wicked, profane and or unclean, that is, living in sin. Now, there are also three types of people living in sin. That is, those who do so knowingly, those who do so ignorantly, and those who are willingly ignorant. That's not even trying to find out, don't want to find out. Ignorance is not bliss, y'all. Matthew, Matthew Yahoo 9, verse 6 says, But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thy house. Now what can we deduce from this? It says, But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. That's why he told the sick of the palsy to arise and take up thy bed so that they would know that he has power on earth to forgive sins. In other words, what he's saying is that they, this guy had the palsy because of his sins. Can everybody see that? Yeah. Yeah. Yochanan 5.14 Afterward, Yahushua findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto thee. Again, implying that the reason that the thing came upon him was because of sin. Yeah. Hence, he tells him to sin no more. Lest a worse thing come, come unto thee. Mm. Now, when you sin, you don't know what you let in. Mm -hmm. Say la. Yeah. Micah 6.13, Therefore, also will I make thee sick in smiting thee, in making thee desolate because of thy sin. If one truly believed the Holy Scriptures, it should be evident that the ultimate cause of our infirmities and diseases are due to our sins. Yes. Yes. Scripturally speaking, this cause of infirmity and disease grossly outweighs the other two. You know, most people are living in sin, and many of them ignorantly. You know, they're, they're doing so, but they're doing, they're ignorant to it. They, they don't know that they are. You know, but, you know, everything in this world is cause and effect. Yeah. Whether you, you can stick your hand in a hot fire if you want to, and 
whether you know that that fire is hot or not, it's still going to burn you. Yeah. You know, so we ought to uh, also consider that even a sickness unto death, and this is, this is to the glory of, of our, our awesome El who's, whose mercy endureth forever. When we consider that even a sickness unto death could be averted via the prayers of the righteous. Don't take my word for it. Let's look at a scripture example. Hallelujah. Yeah. And my first reader read 2 Kings 20, 1 through 7. In those days was Hezekiah sick upon death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amaz, came to him and said unto him, Thus says Yahuwah, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto Yahuwah, saying, I beseech thee, O Yahuwah, Remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass before Isaiah was gone, gone out into the middle court that the word of Yahuwah came to him saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith Yahuwah, the Elohim of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer and I have seen thy tears. Behold, I heal thee on the third day, and shall go up into the house of Yahuwah. And I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee to, and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend the city for my own sake, for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. And they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. Hallelujah. Okay, let's look at this for a second, because... Um, I want us to see what's here, but I want us to also see what's not here. See, because uh, oftentimes we look and we see things that, that may be before us, but we don't see the things that's not there, but are really there. All right. Just bear with me. You'll see what I'm talking about. All right. It says, in those days, Hezekiah was sick unto death. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. And it says, thus saith Yahuwah, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Now let's look at what's not there. Let's look at what Hezekiah didn't do. Mm. Now, he was the king. So, undoubtedly, he had the best physicians in all the kingdom at his disposal. Amen? Amen. But he didn't send for now one of them. Right. Yeah. Did you catch that? Yeah. See, you probably read that a hundred times and didn't catch that. You know, he did not send for now one of the physicians of Israel. He didn't send for now another prophet. You know, to get a second witness. Yeah. Did you peep that? Yeah. But what did he do? He turned his face to the wall and he prayed yeah. unto yeah. Yahoo. See, he know he knew who his healer was. Yeah. Yeah. There was no doubt in this brother's mind. He knew who his healer was. He knew where his healing had to come from. So he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto Yahuwah. You know, and he began to plead with Yahuwah and talk about how he done walked before him in truth and with a perfect heart mm. and have done that which was good in his sight. Yeah. And Hezekiah wept sore. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Let's go back for a minute at that recipe. Yeah. Yeah. Remember what, what Yah said. See, you got to hold him to his word. Remember what he said. He said, if thou would diligently hearken unto the voice of Yahuwah and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his, to his commandments and keep all his statutes, yeah. I will put none of these diseases upon thee. For he is Yahuwah that healed us. Now, is this not exactly what Hezekiah did? That's what he, did. Yep. he turned his face to the wall and he began to pray to his yeah. elf. Oh, yeah. And he said, remember... Now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. I did the best that I could with what I had right. and have done that which was good in thy sight. Yeah. And it says, and it came to pass before Yeshayahu was gone out into the middle court. He, the brother didn't even get to the middle court after he left the king. Before he got to the middle court, Yah spoke to him and told him to turn around. Mm. Said, tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith Yahuwah, the Elohim of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. Mm. 
I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. See, Yah is still our healer. You know, he was the healer back then. He's the healer now today. It's just a matter of whether or not you believe it. But I'm here to tell you, I believe it. And I'm going to stand on his word. Hallelujah. And then he told Yes, Yahoo, Yes, Yahoo told him, take a lump of figs. Take no, he didn't say, go over to the physician and have him take that scalpel and cut it out. He didn't say, go and, and, and have him take a hot rock and burn it away. But he said, take a lump of figs. And they took and laid it on the board and he recovered. If one is sick, the only way one would truly know what category of sickness one falls into without y'all telling them is if one first becomes scripturally clean and holy. But this is the only way to rule out sin as a factor. Remember Yob? Mm -hmm. Yob or Job if you prefer, just over broke. <laughs> he knew he was clean and holy and therefore was able to rule out sin as being the cause. Say lie. See, same thing with Hezekiah. He knew that he had done what was right. Mm -hmm. So he was able to rule out sin as a cause. Mm -hmm. Now, scripturally speaking, how does one become unclean or unholy in the first place? Essentially, it is via sin that we become profane and or unclean. We thereby open a door for the unclean spirits of infirmity to come and manifest sickness and disease in our lives. This explains why Yahshua was at times able to heal people by casting out devils or unclean spirits. You know, let's take a look at Matthew Yahoo 9, 32 and 33 as an example. It says, as they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake. And the multitudes marveled, saying it was never so seen in Israel. So can you see that the dumb couldn't speak because the devil was in them? It was manifesting this sickness or disease in the form of dumbness, of him not being able to speak. But when it was cast out, he was able to speak. Scripture teaches us that if we're covenanted with Yahuwah Elohim, you know, we can, we can ask of him what we will and he'll hear our prayers. But it also speaks of if we don't keep his commandments, it results in sickness and disease. But this is the curse that shall come upon those who sin. Sin is not without price. Yes, right. yeah. yes, the Messiah came to save us from our sins. Yes, our slates are wiped clean once. Don't think that you can keep sinning and, and keep saying, oh, I repent, and, and your slate is constantly wiped clean. It is not. Hence, the Messiah would say, you know, those who sin ignorantly will receive few stripes, but those who sin knowingly will receive many. Well, if they accepted him, I thought they wouldn't receive none. I thought they slave was right clean. Yeah, it is, once. But then what you do from that point is attributed to your, to your books, if you would. You will be weighed in the scale, and I pray you're not found wanting. Now, we need to understand this concept we serve a holy Elohim that is scripturally clean. But we are sinful men who are spiritually unclean. Now, that puts a barrier or a wall between us and Elohim. And this is a barrier of sin. And Yah, he came to remove this barrier. He came to knock this wall down. And he done so with his teachings and instructions. He done so with his commandments. You know, but if we don't follow them, we remain spiritually unclean. And this wall remains betwixt us and Elohim. Let's take a look at what this looked like in Scripture. Uh, Deuteronomy 28. 58 through 65, the next reader, please. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in the book, 
that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, Yahuwah thy Elohim. Then Yahuwah will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, then will Yahuwah bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. And ye should be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude. Because the wood is not obey the voice of Yahuwah, thy Elohim. And it shall come to pass that as Yahuwah rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so Yahuwah will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. And ye should be plucked from off the land, whether thou goest to possess it. And Yahuwah shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shall thou find no ease, neither, neither shall the sole of thy feet have rest. But Yahuwah shall give thee there a trembling heart, and a, and a failing of eyes, and sorrows of mind. Okay, so this is this was given this was um spoken to Israel shortly after they entered into covenant with Yah. You know. And they're being told that Yahuwah will make plagues wonderful and the plagues of thy seed and even great plagues of long continuance and sore sickness of long continuance. What's another name for that? Disease. Isn't disease of long continuance? You know. Don't they tell you that you, you got it forever? That's pretty long, isn't it? You know, and he says, you know, moreover he will bring unto thee all the diseases of Egypt which thou was afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Now, but check this out. Verse 61 says, also every sickness and plague which, was, which is not written in the book of the law. Then will Yahuwah bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. You know, so he throwing everything in the book and some at him. <laughs> Amen? Isn't that what it says? Yes. <laughs> you know, and we know that they didn't obey the voice of Yah. And we know that these things happen. And I know, you know, there's some naysayers that say, yeah, but that, that was that was then. That's you know, that's the old testament. But we have a Messiah now, you know. Yeah. You know. And so, you know, that can't happen to us. You know, I'm here to tell you that, you know, because you accept the Messiah don't mean that you have a, a um, I'm free to sin card. That's right. That's right. You know, just, just like, just like I, was, I was just speaking of, you know, you're going to be judged on your works. You know, and if you deserve stripes, you're going to get them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't think for a moment that you won't. But just for the sake of balance, let's take a look at something at another passage in the Brick Shah. Let me have my next reader read 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 30. Is it first verse? I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 30. For I received of the edification of the Lord that I also might deliver unto you. But the Adonai Yahushua, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the agonized death until he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink, this cup of the Adonai unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Adonai. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Adonai's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Okay. Now first of all, I want to point out verse 25. 
where it says after the same manner, he also took the cup, saying this is a very timely message because Pesach or Passover is, is, is coming up this, um, this next week, I mean, Amen. you know, so please do take heed to this. Right. You know, it says this is, this cup is the New Testament, it says in, in King James, but this word testament is the same word that's used for covenant elsewhere. You know, and, and actually what he's saying is this cup is the new covenant yes. in my blood. You know, see, when you partake of this, you know, you're partaking, you're entering into covenant yes. with Yahshua. Yes. Yes. See, you have to know and understand this because there's consequences to breaking that covenant. Yes. See, and along with that covenant came the eating of the bread, yes. which speaks to the Messiah's teachings and instructions, speaks yes. to his commandments that we're to eat, that we are to do. You know, just it's the same thing that we see. In Torah, yes, yes. it's the exact same yes. thing. It's a parallel. Yes. See, and we, we must know and understand this because there's consequences to breaking covenant yes. with Elohim. Yes. Hence, we see um, Apostle Paul teaching that many, this word many is actually polus in the Greek, number 4183, meaning largely or mostly. So Apostle Paul is teaching that many, that is most believers, are weak, that is sick. Sickly, which speaks to being diseased, and sleep, which means to being dead, mm -hmm. because they partake of the renewed covenant of Yahushua unworthily, mm -hmm. thereby causing a breach of covenant and the curse that comes with. Mm -hmm. See, so you have to understand that, you know, this is not nothing new. This is the same thing, y'all. It's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's Yahuwah. He changes not. There are consequences to breaking covenant with him. And these consequences have not changed throughout the course of time. They are still the curses that we read about. Hence, Apostle Paul is saying, For this cause many are weak, sickly, and dead. Most. He's talking about many polos, largely, mostly. Do you understand what he's saying? He's saying that, hey, if, you, if you're not serious about this, then don't do it. You can still walk in the way. You can still be baptized, but don't enter into covenant with him until you're ready. Because for this cause, many are weak, sickly, and dead. Many are sick, diseased, and dead because they didn't do this. They didn't heed this admonishment. So, say la. Now, seeing that so much is hanging on us not sinning, we do well to fully understand just what Scripture means by sin. I know everybody has their idea of what sin is, but sometimes our ideas don't match up with Scripture. I mean, so, we're going to see what scripture says. First, Yoke 9, 3, 4 says, Whosoever commit a sin transgresseth also the law, or Torah. For sin is the transgression yeah. of the law, or Torah. Hereby, we learn that sin is connected with the laws of Elohim. With this in mind, let us consider that the Hebrew word for sin is kata, yeah. meaning to fall short, to miss the mark. Therefore, we can conclude that any time we miss the mark, that is, we fall short of Yah's laws, i.e. Yah's will for our lives, we are in sin. To fully understand where I'm coming from, you must understand that there are various types of sin, which can be perpetrated by Yah's sheep, such as national sin, tribal or familial sin, individual sin, as well as sins against nature, sins against Yah himself, even sins against oneself. All such sins need to be repented of. Mm -hmm. To clarify this concept somewhat more, let's consider some examples of the aforementioned sins found in Scripture. An example of national sin can be found in Numbers chapter 14. Numbers 14, 1 says, And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. It goes on to say, And all the children of Israel murmured against Moshe and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, Would Elohim that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would Elohim we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore 
have Yahuwah brought us into this land. To fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey. Were it not better for us to return to Mizraim or Egypt? And they said unto another, they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return to Mizraim. See, this is the very same thing that, you know, everybody, that most people are doing today. They just don't have the eyes to see it, but I'm going to try to open your eyes so that you can see it today. Because this is the same thing that folks are doing today. They, you know, you have so many people, I've heard so many people say, oh, if I was back in those days, I would, ain't no way I would have, uh, wouldn't have believed. Well, it's not no difference between then and now. That's right. It really isn't, you know, but let me um, put your coattail on something. It says, now we all came out of Mizraim just like they came out of Mizraim. Mm -hmm. You know, they came out of physical Egypt or Mizraim. We came out of the world, supposedly, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, and where Yah has brought us into the wilderness, where he brought them into the wilderness, he brought us into a spiritual wilderness. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Okay. And, you know, we are faced with the same giants they were faced with. That's true. You know, they were faced with physical giants, we're faced with spiritual giants. Yeah. And because of those giants, many of us fear. You know, because of giants such as, you know, mammon, you know, uh, let's just say social security. <laughs> You know, because that, that's a giant. That's a giant. That's a spiritual giant today. Everybody wants social security, but they don't want to go to Yah for it. Instead, they go to Rome, who has their office waiting for them. You know, when they need clothes, they want to go down to, you know, Yah's social security, you know, to his welfare office, because they want good welfare. You know, but Yah says, seek ye the kingdom of Elohim, and these things shall be added yeah, unto you. Yeah. You know, but Yah's people are running everywhere but the right place. True. You know, and they, they're trying to make a captain, i.e. pastor, bishop, evangelist, Amen. preacher, teacher, and, 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 and saying, let us return to Mizraim. You know, they going back to Egypt, y'all. I, I hate to tell you, you know, but that's what they're doing when they make Yah's ecclesia, when they make his church, his assembly, out of a business. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You know, that's what they're doing when, when Yah's stuff become a business. Because a business is only a business for two reasons, and don't you forget it. It's two reasons and two reasons only. The first reason is to turn a profit, and the next... The second reason is to stay in business so they can do the number one reason. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only reason businesses exist. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so know and understand what's going on. Open your eyes to, what, to what's happening around you. So when they wanted to go back to Mizraim, see, whenever you're doing something that's outside of the word, if it's outside of the word, then it's in the world. You know, it says, when they did that, Moshe and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. See, this is, this is what us believers are supposed to do. When we see our loved ones that's walking in the faith and saying that they, you know, uh, they baptized, they, they uh, blessed and highly favored, Holy Ghost filled, and we see them turning and doing stuff that's outside the word of Elohim, yeah. you know, after we done, um, you know, spoke to them and tried to, to get them to, to see the truth. We supposed to drop on our faces. Yeah. Try dropping on your face before. Because yeah. <laughs> this is what Moses and Aaron did. They fell on their faces before all the assembly. Yeah. And they began praying for them. And it says, And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of, of Yephune, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes, and they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceedingly good land. Don't you know that New Jerusalem is an exceedingly good land? Amen. The kingdom of Elohim is an exceedingly good Amen. land. Amen. If Yahuwah delight in us, 
then he will bring us into this land and give it us. A land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against Yahuwah. Don't rebel against our elder king. Neither fear ye the people of the land. I know they have police forces and they have armies and this, that, and the other. But we have Yah. Yeah. Don't that mean something? Yeah. For they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them. And Yahuwah is with us. Fear them not. But if you go out here saying what I'm saying to you now today, they're going to they gonna tell you what many of, them, many of you probably thinking about me right now. But all the congregation, they stone them with stones. <laughs> and the glory of Yahuwah appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. See, they done got in trouble. <laughs> Trying to mess with God's anointed. They done got in trouble. An example of tribal or familial sin. Let me have my next reader read Judges 21 through 7. Then all the children of Israel went out, and the congregation was gathered together as one man, from Dan even to Beersheba, with the land of Gilead, Gilead unto Yahuwah and Mizpah. Mizpah. And the chief of all the people, even of all the tribes of Israel, presented themselves in the assembly of the people of Elohim, 400,000 footmen that drew sword. Now the children of Benjamin heard that the children of Israel were gone up to Mitzpah. Then said the children of Israel, Tell us, how was this wickedness? And the Levite, the husband of the woman that was slain, answered and said, I came to Gibeah that belongeth to Benjamin, I and my concubine to lodge. And the men of Gibeah rose against me and beset the house round about upon me by night and thought to have slain me and my concubine have they forced that she is dead. And I took my concubine and cut her in pieces and sent her throughout all the country of the inheritance of Israel. For they have committed lewdness and folly in Israel. Mm -hmm. Behold, ye are all children of Israel. Give here your advice and counsel. Okay. I forgot to mention the second witness to the nas national sin is Numbers 25, you know, uh, when the children fell for accepting Baal Peor. Mm -hmm. You yes. know, yes. God says, let every matter be established yes. by the mouth of two or three witnesses. Yes. Amen. Yes. Okay. Now, an example of tribal familial sin. Here it is, we have the Benjaminites that done, you know, they done sin. You know, we had a Levite who, who went into the land and he, he chose not to to stay the night in the, in the pagan land. So he, he decided, I'm going to go over to where Yah, to Yah's people are. You know, rightfully so. And it says, the Levite, the husband of the woman that was slain, answered and said, I came into Gibeah that belonged to Benjamin, and I and my concubine the lodge, and the men of Gibeah rose against me and beset the house round about upon me that night by night, and thought to have slain me and my concubine have they forced that she is dead. And but did what he what uh what the Levite does. He took his concubine and cut her into twelve pieces and sent her throughout all the country of the inheritance of Israel. For they have committed lewdness and folly in Israel. Why do you think he did this? See, well, he, he done it because he knew and understood, you know, what happened during the time of Achan. Achan is a second witness to this, to a fa tribal or familial sin. He knew that when somebody in the family that dwell, be, dwell in your midst, when they, when they do sin, it don't just affect them, it affects the whole family. See, this is why he cut his wife up and sent her to all the 12 tribes. Because that blood was on all of them. See, because Yah was upset with all of them until they make it right. So they got together. They went up against their brother Benjamin. They asked Yah, do you want us to go up against him? He said, yeah. They went up against him and got whooped. <laughs> yeah. 
And then, you know, they had to re recant things, you know. They had to rethink it. And they asked God, again, you sure you want us to go up against them? He said, yeah, they went up against them again and got whooped again. <laughs> they got a little worried then. But they knew they was hearing from Yah. So they asked them, well, you want us to do it again? He said, yeah. And then he gave them the victory. So don't think. Because you're doing the word of Elohim that things can't go wrong. That's the point that I want you to understand. Don't think just because you're doing what's right that, that everything going to go right. It don't work that way. You know, so you need to know and understand this. But this is what the Levite understood. And this is what all the elders of Israel understood. And this is why they, 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 they took a stance. And they was going to cut this evil out from their midst. And they... they almost annihilated the Benjaminites yeah, completely. Yeah. Yeah. They almost eliminated a tribe from out of Israel. Yeah. So much so that they that they was they was feeling bad. Yeah. You know, and they 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 put together a plan to mm -hmm. help get them some wives but they don't kill everybody. You know? <laughs> and they promised not to get none of their wives so they had to go find them some. So you know but that's a that's an example of tribal or familial sin. You know, and just to, just to, um, to bring it into modern day times, you know, say, say uh, you know, you have a household and, and one of the teenagers, you know, male teenagers is, you know, is, you know, is a dope dealer. Mm. And he goes out and he do something stupid and next thing you know, the house getting shot up. Mm -hmm. right. You know, he bring the trouble back home. Yeah. Same thing. That's the same thing. If you have eyes to see, I, I'm... Now, concerning individual sin, my next reader, 2 Chronicles 26, 17 through 21. Hang on one second. Can you give me the um, scripture reference for Aiken? Was it, it was Joshua 7? Uh, yes, yes, for Aiken. Yes. Joshua, Joshua. Mm -hmm. jo um, Joshua, for Aiken. This is the second witness to the familiar or tribal sin. And the Azariah the priest went in after him, and with him four score priests of Yahuwah that were valiant men. And they withstood Uzziah the king, and said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto Yahuwah, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense, go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed. Neither shall it be for thine honor from Yahuwah Elohim. Then Uzziah was wroth, and had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wroth with the priests, the leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priests in the house of Yahuwah from beside the incense altar. And Azariah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked upon him. And behold, he was leprous in his forehead, and they thrust him out from thence. Yea, himself hasted also to go out, because Yahuwah had smitten him. And Uzziah the king was a leper after the day of his death, and dwelt in a, in a several house, being a leper, for he was cut off from the house of Yahuwah. And Jotham, his son, was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. Okay, so here we see they withstood Uzziah. Uzziah, he had got this uh, high-minded idea that he was going to go and offer um, incense to Yah. You know, he was the king and all, but he wasn't a priest. You know, and that was that was not for him to do. That's right. And so when the priest go into the uh, temple to check him, he cop an attitude. <laughs> and, and they told him, you know, you know, yeah, we, we, we know you come in here to do this, but, you know, you, you out of line, king. You out of line. Mm -hmm. You know, this is for the priests, the sons of Aaron, that, us, that, that we were consecrated to do this. Mm -hmm. See, you have to know and understand what consecration means. Mm -hmm. You know, they're consecrated unto Yah. So that's why they were able to go in there. Mm -hmm. You know, and they, they, they asked him, you know, go on up out of here. Go on up out of here. Get, get out of the sanctuary. You, you, you trespass. You know? And neither, neither shall it be for thine honor from Yahuwah Elohim. Don't think that you're going to get no brownie points for this. But instead of taking rebuke, because what they were saying was right, he copped an attitude and got upset. And even while he was thinking in his mind, says that Yah was wroth. You know, it said that he was wroth, and while he was wroth with the priest, leprosy even rose up in his forehead. 
even before the priest in the house of Yahoo and from beside the altar, they had to rush them up out of there. You know, so you see again, because of this sin, sickness came upon them. And when he left up out of there, it didn't say that it went away either. It says that Uzziah, the king, was a leper until the day of his death. You know, uh, second, um, second uh, uh, witness to individual sin uh, could be David, King David, you know, and the sin that he did against Uriah. Mm. The sin that he did against Uriah, uh, where, whereby he, he got in trouble, you know, and, and caused his child to um, die. Okay, sin against nature. Leviticus 25, 1 through 5, it says, And Yahuwah spake unto Moshe in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto Yahuwah. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruits thereof. But in the seventh year, shall be but in the seventh year shall be a sabbath of rest unto the land a sabbath for yahuwah thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard that which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest thou shalt not reap neither gather the grapes of thy vine undressed neither gather the grapes of thy vine undressed for it is a year of rest unto the land this is the time for the land to get a rest yes. Amen. you know and you can sin against nature and we're going to get into a lot of sins against nature later on in this series. You know, but another scriptural one, um, I can't remember the address, but it, it speaks to, um, uh, y'all told him not to cut down the fruit trees. Yes. That's you know, and it's a reason why he told him not to cut down the fruit trees, because the fruit trees yes. feed the land. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. They don't just feed us. Yes. They feed the land, too. Yes. You know, when that fruit go down there and decompose, mm -hmm. you know, it feeds the land. Okay, sin against Yah personally. You know, Yermi Yahoo 44, 15 through 19. Um, my next reader, please. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other Elohim, and all the women that stood by a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, and Petra answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of Yahuwah, we will not we will not hearken unto thee. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her. As we have done, we and our fathers, our kings, and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals and were, and were well and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offering unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by yes, the famine. Yes, yes. And when we burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? Yes, 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 yes. You know. They sinned against Yah yes, they did. personally, yes. and he took it personally. Yes, did. You know. <laughs> and other examples of sin against Yah personally would be taking his name in vain. Yes. Yes. You know, you know, talking about, you know, yeah, Yah is my El and my King, but yet going out and doing everything under the sun that brings dishonor to his name. Mm. You know, but yet you telling people that you serve him and right. then you took going out and doing sin. Well, you bringing, you bringing dishonor upon his name. You're taking his name in vain. Yes. You know, breaking vows to him. You know, and flat out lying to him. 
Because you have people who do that too. Oh, yeah, if you just get me out of this one. If you just get me out of this one, you won't have to worry about me no more. Next week, you're saying the same thing. If you just get me out of this one, you know. No, 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 no. That's, that's you know, that sins against y'all personally. Sins against men. And it says, and I gave, this is second. Samuel 12, 8 through 15. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into, into thy bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of Yahuwah to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the, the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Amnon. Amnon. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus say, say of Yahuwah, behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house. And I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor. And he, he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of, of this son. For thou didst secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. And thy beast said unto Nathan, I have sinned against Yahuwah. And Nathan said unto thy Yahuwah, also have put away thy sin, and thou shalt not die, how be it? Because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of Yahuwah to blaspheme the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. Yeah. And Nathan departed unto his house, and Yahuwah struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was sick. And I want to point out something here. This word blaspheme, which could mean to scorn or, or something to that, but to that effect, but it also can mean to bloom. You know, and with that in mind, you know, how be it because this by this deed, thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of Yahuwah to bloom. That is to sprout forth yeah, yeah. in your life. To blossom into your life. You know, and we see as a result, the child also that was born unto thee shall surely die. And they can depart it. And Yahuwah struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. So again, we see sickness being a result of sin. Mm -hmm. Lastly, there are sins against oneself. And the swine, though he divide the hoof. Oh, this is Leviticus 11, 7 through 12. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he chew up not the cud. He is unclean to you. See now, these are sins against oneself. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass yes, shall ye yes. not touch. They are unclean yes. to you. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the waters, in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be in an abomination unto you. They shall be even an abomination unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination. Whatsoever have no fins nor scales in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. Now, please take note how Yah describes these things as unclean unto you. Because you eat them, not going to make me unclean. You got to understand that. When you eat them, they make it you unclean. That's right. That's right. They're an abomination unto you and your flesh. Yes. Now the question is, how are they making you unclean? Well, it's not you're going to eat them and then, you know, you're going to um, you take a shower and then, then you eat them and then you, you look on yourself and you got a bunch of dirt on your arm. That's not quite what he means. It, it's, it's speaking about making you unclean spiritually and internally. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. yes. See, and there was one that, that done an experiment, and he, he ventured to find out, you know, just, you know, why did God say not to eat these type foods? And he, he found out that all the unclean foods, when one eats them, all right. 
they digest exceedingly fast in the body. So fast that the body can't extract the nutrients from them. And as a result, they go on to cause sickness and disease. You know, so even, but even without that, it should be enough that Yah has said it. Amen. Right, yes, yes. Amen. You know, we're not going to always understand why he say what he says, but just because he said it should be enough. Because we're supposed to become as little children. And little children, little children don't argue with their parents. Because little children realize they're totally dependent upon their parents. And little children, they're afraid of their parents. You know, and they respect them. But they are afraid too. And the fear of Elohim is the beginning of wisdom. Now I really want to stop here, but I'm gonna try, I'm gonna push on. Hallelujah. I'm gonna push on. Lord, I come before you to praise your name and glorify you, Father. I cancel every curse and negative word that has been spoken over me. My life, family, and future. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, most people have the wrong conception concerning curses. Yeah. Like this young lady, they think the curses only come upon us via someone else speaking them over our lives. But that is far from the truth. You know, it's because of those sins that we've been going over that these curses come into our lives. It's because of the sins, whether, this, whether this, the sin is knowingly or, or unknowingly, the curse still remains. Yes, that's right. You know, it's not enough to say a few words and, and think you're going to wipe away every curse. The only way you're going to get rid of these curses is you're going to have to stop doing the things that bring about the that's curse. Right. Yes, you can accept the Messiah and he'll, he will clear your slate, but then you have to stop doing the things that bring on the curse. Yeah. Yahshua is, is, is not going to keep coming down and getting on the torture stake for you. He done it once for all humanity. Yes. Yes. And that once is sufficient. Yes. Now after you've accepted him, then you ought to be repenting and turning from your wicked ways. Yes. Yes. You ought to be getting the mindset of, I need to stop doing the things that bring about these curses. Yes. I need to stop doing the things that are not right in his sight. Then, his stripes will begin to heal us. Amen. Then we can, we can speak all those wonderful promises all right now. that everyone likes to boast about. Mm. <laughs> but a curse causeless shall not come. The reason that we are cursed is because of the different types of sins that we haven't repented of. That we haven't converted from. Some of us done repented. We're sorry about it. But we still haven't stopped doing it. Yes, yes, yes. We have to repent and convert. We have to be sorry. Have compunction and turn and go the other way. Amen. We become a curse due to our personal sins against God, men, and ourselves. But it's often overlooked how many have also become cursed due to tribal or familial sins. Now, these type curses show up as inherent weaknesses within our bodies. See, now, this is a concept that, you know, oftentimes go overlooked. See, but just as Achan caused people that was in Israel to, to, to perish, you know, and just as the Benjamin, Benjaminites in Gibeah that done that horrific act caused other Benjaminites to perish, so do the members of our family, so have they caused curses to come upon us. See, and we have to understand these things. You know, because our tribal or familial sins, they show up, the curse show up as inherent weaknesses in, in our bodies. You know, and if our forefathers been eating all the wrong things for generations, then we may be born with a weak heart. Yeah, or we may be born with a weak kidneys. All right. Or we may be born mm -hmm. with a weak pancreas. Mm -hmm. 
See, you have to understand that due to these sins, they still have an effect on our bodies. That's right. That's right. You know, and these curses are passed down. See, and we can break the curse. We can reverse the curse. Yes. But you have to first recognize that it's a curse. Yes. And you have to repent of the things that brought about the curse. Yes. You have to repent and become converted. Stop doing the things that brought on the curse. Because just because you was born with a weak heart don't mean you have to go through life with a weak heart. You can stop doing the things that cross the weak heart and start feeding that heart and make it stronger. When we do that which is right, in the eyes of Yah, and he to all his commandments, he will heal us. And the devil is a lie when he tells you that you can't be healed. You most certainly can, but you have to repent and convert from the things that brought about the curse. And sometimes these things are tribal or familial sins. And not sometimes they wasn't even done intentionally, but they were done all the same. See, and you have to understand that. It's not just because, you know, hey, somebody did wrong and, and, and woman on the other side of town cursed them and that curse been following the family ever since. No. no. You know, that maybe that's so. But no. I'm talking about this kind of curse because here it is, you love pork chops and, and fat back and, and, and pig feet, you know. And now here it is, your child done been born with a weak pancreas and, and suffering with diabetes. That's what I'm talking about. These inherent weaknesses, you know, have an effect on the generations that come from our loins. Now, additionally, many sheep will become accursed via the sins of their particular nations. You know, just as we talked about the national sin. Now, take the United States of America, for instance which has ignored Yah's scriptural principles concerning land saddles. As a result, the land has become grossly mineral deficient. Please don't be fooled by the big, beautiful, healthy-looking fruits and vegetables we see in the grocery store, for their look is more likely due to the NPK, that is the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash, which are the chemical poisons sprayed on the crops today, that are posing as fertilizers. Our nation's simple agricultural practices have been stripping the soil of all its nutrients. They are devastating the nutritional value of crops, making dramatic changes at an alarming rate. See, you have to understand that this is the sins of our nation, and our sins of our nations have caused us to become accursed. As an example, the presence of vitamin A has decreased from 41% to as much as 100% in six items that were tracked. Apples, bananas, broccoli, onions, potatoes, and tomatoes. Of these six, both the onion and the potato saw a 100% loss in vitamin A. In a 48, this happened within a 48 year span from 1951 to 1999. Corporations are at the forefront of this issue. Yeah. Being profit-driven, they stop at nothing to accomplish their goal. They have prostituted the scientists into, in, in, unto Satan himself and has left us to pay the bill. You see, corporations own most of the farmland, whereas they implement l the latest scientific insecticides. They also have the scientists genetically modify their crops by changing its DNA because the GMOs, i.e. the genetically modified organisms, are better at resisting harsh weather, p pesticides, and herbicides, which all work to increase their bottom line. In essence, the scientists and corporate farmers have ventured to improve upon Yah's creation by essentially recreating nature. But these new mutant GMOs also work to adulterate Yah's original creation. Yes. You know, they're, they're, they're putting this stuff out here and it's, it's contaminating yes, it Yah's is. nature. Yes, a GMO or genetically modified organism is an animal, plant, or bacteria that has had its genetic makeup altered. Gene modification is designed to improve the quality and nutrition of the organism and increase the maturation and yield according to the Human Genome Project information, or so they say. But not everyone is convinced GMO foods are safe. Some claim that they may cause harm to the environment and the health of the people who eat them. But don't worry, 
For these chemical companies, i.e. corporate farmers, are thoroughly testing these GMOs. The only problem is that they're being tried and tested on us, the United States consumers, without our consent. That's right, unbeknownst to, the, to most, they are using the American public as guinea pigs. If you want to try to opt out of the experiment, then you need to stay away from the following foods and anything made with them, for they are unclean unto you. <laughs> We're going to talk about the milk and dairy industry, you know, that pump vaccines and, and uh, preserve um, hormones and pesticides and antibiotics and even cow blood into the feeds of the, of the cows. Although there are currently no approved GMO cows, not yet, the dairy industry is a heavy user of the GE, the genetically engineered growth hormone, RBGH and RBST. This helps boost milk production, but possibly lead to health concerns, very positively. This growth hormone oftentimes stresses the cow's body, leading to certain diseases that must be treated with antibiotics, which end up in the consumer. Mm -hmm. This can lead to antibiotic resistance and even antibiotic allergic reactions. Oh, and by the way, did I mention that it also acts as a cancer accelerator in the body? Even if it says no RBGH or no RBST, you still have to steer clear, pun intended, for it was more than likely fed nothing but GMO feed. That's right, that's all they feed the animals is GMO feed. That said, there are some good milk substitutes, such as almond milk and rice milk and things of that sort that you can substitute. If you can get real milk or even goat's milk, mm -hmm. you know, you'll be a lot better off. But they outlawed, yes, they outlawed the sale, the sale of real milk. You know, and this was a real big to-do in the dairy industry. They literally outlawed whole milk. You cannot, the um, farmers cannot sell whole milk to people. They, it has to be pasteurized, you know, which kills all its nutrients. You know, they can't sell it commercially. Some places you can drive up to their door and get it, and they may even have stopped that by now. Other animal products... Like milk, dairy, and many, uh, many animal products, uh, meat, fish, chicken, pork, etc., can be thought of as gen genetically engineered as well for the same thing that's going on, that's going on in the beef industry. It, uh, it's also happening with the other animal products. They're giving them growth hormones and all, all this, this other stuff, and they're fed GMO feed. You know, so they're feeding them from the time that they're a youth all the way to the time that they go to slaughter this GMO feed. So what effect do you think that the GMO feed is having on the body. Mm -hmm. Additionally, they already have a genetically engineered farm-raised salmon, in case you didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Currently being tested, and if not already, will be soon coming to a local grocery store near <laughs> you. That's right. That's right. Buying 100% organic beef, chicken, lamb, and goat, etc., is one's best option at this time. So keep that in mind. Now we're going to talk about the oils. Don't you know that many of these oils, they're pretty much new as far as, as, far as uh, history goes. They're only about 100 years old because they didn't have the technology to press oil from corn. They didn't have the technology to press oil from uh, most vegetables or, or uh, beans and um, sunflower seeds, so on and so forth. The oils, you know, uh, you need to watch out for the cooking oil. Most people have too many of these puffers that come from these oils, uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids. Uh, unless labeled otherwise, assume that the corn, soybean, cottonseed, and canola oils produced in North America are polluted with GMOs. Mm -hmm. Additionally, blended oils are also a problem due to the common practice of GMO, uh, canola, and cottonseed, which they put in everything. Mm -hmm. To be on the safe side, buy only 100% organic oils not made from the above ingredients, and be sure not to forget to check the labels on the salad dressings, for they're usually loaded with such oils. Organic olive oil, palm oil, and coconut oils will be excellent choices. Those are some good oils. Now we're going to talk about the sweeteners. You know, first of all, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be consuming anything 
that says artificial. <laughs> you know, if we're trying to get back to Yah, there's nothing artificial about him. You know, so we need to take that to heed first and foremost. Now, the dangers of aspartame poisoning have been a well-guarded secret since the 80s. The research and history of aspartame shows it to be a cause of illness and toxic reactions in the human body. Aspartame is a very dangerous chemical food additive that should be avoided. And I can speak all day on aspartame by itself. Uh, sugar beet is one of the largest genetically engineered crops in the country. And along with corn being another huge GMO crop, you know, just about 90 plus percent of all corn in this country is GMO. Food sweetened with um, high fructose corn syrup should also be avoided. Even though cane sugar is not a GMO, after processing it, it does in fact become a poison. A food by modern definition is any nutritious substance, and seeing that sugar has zero nutrients, therefore it is not a food, not even by modern standards. And seeing that it is about as addictive as cocaine, in which it is, I think it would be better categorized as a drug. And all drugs are recognized as toxins, that is, poisons by the body. Now, really, you could probably, you know, safely consume about two pounds of sugar a year. But the average person in America consumes over 150 pounds of sugar per year. It's best to go with organic alternative sweeteners, such as molasses, raw honey, rabies, maple syrup, stevia, etc. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I'm hitting home, huh? <laughs> cereals and breakfast foods. <laughs> Many cereals and breakfast foods today contain artificial sweeteners such as aspartame and trace ingredients that are GMO, namely soy and corn additive or sugars like those aforementioned. If one must have these type of foods, eat only organic cereals, not sweetened with any other artificial and GMO sweeteners. That looks good, doesn't it? I thought that was such a beautiful picture. Fruits and vegetables. <laughs> Although there are not many genetically engineered fruits or vegetables in the U.S., packaged, frozen, or canned fruits or vegetables often have GMO additives. Wow. And <laughs> some fruits <laughs> some fruits and veggies are actually coated with GMO made additives, such as GMO made wax or oil before hitting the shelves. Mm. Yeah. Some genetically engineered foods in this category are zucchini, yellow squash, sweet corn, and papaya from Hawaii. You'll see the wax right on top of them. Mm. They put it on apples too. Yeah. You know. Additionally, take heed to the coated system used on fresh fruits and veggies. The, they have a coated system. If the fruit has only four digits on its blue code, it is conventionally grown and may be a genetically engineered. If it has five numbers, starting with an eight, then it is GMO. And if it starts with a nine, it is organic. Unfortunately, the number eight for GMO is only voluntary, and most companies, if not all of them, volunteer not to use it. Therefore, try to shop with the small farmers, for they usually don't use G, um, genetically modified foods, but do ask to make sure. Look for products labeled non-GMO. They will mostly be found at your local non-franchise health food stores. Emphasis on now franchise. A word to the wise. The national franchise so-called health food stores has been weighed in the balances and have been found wanting. Mm -hmm. While many of the smaller health food stores still retain their integrity. Yeah. Caveat emptor. Buyer beware. Due to the national sins such as these, many scriptural foods that Elohim once considered clean have in some cases become defiled and have likewise defiled their consumers, i.e. us. And, you know, whether we know it or not, they're still affecting our bodies yeah. in a negative yeah. manner. Yeah. If one is seeking to keep their temple of Elohim clean and holy, one should definitely try to avoid such perversions. 
avoid all processed foods as they will more than likely contain GMOs. Finally, try to grow your own food, but make sure you use non-GMO seeds. Yes, they have GMO seeds. This way you know exactly what you're getting. Sheba, we must repent and get back to taking responsibility for our own health situations and stop leaving them in the hands of strangers who are not even trying to free us of our diseases. We must become cognizant of what we're putting into Yah's temple that we don't continue to defile it because it does have consequences. Yes, yes. But when we do, the consequences are sickness, disease, yes, yes. and death. That's all I have for you today. Praise the blessing.